Remember uh, episode uh, season four years ago, 2017, uh, and I just I did refer to it earlier in this season. But remember that when there was the uh, the cheetah up in the loft, it was like a, a cheetah. Yes. I thought it was a cheetah or a snow yes, leopard yes, or, yes. or a large reptile. So I'm lying on the bed in the loft, and I'm realizing that something is in the ceiling. Mm-hmm. Uh, something is. Like, Oh, and then, then it starts scratching. A uh, lot of scratching. Uh, I guess Stoff could have done these effects yeah. afterwards, but <laughs> <laughs> I'm try- trying to do them myself. <laughs> but scratching extremely strong and loud. Like in my mind, I'm pretty sure it's a Black Panther. <laughs> so this goes on for uh, 15 or 20 minutes. Now, realistically, raccoon. Yeah. Or a really giant squirrel. Okay? Yeah. One of your dogs, potentially. No, it's in the ceiling. <laughs> <laughs> More horn, please. Lester brought the horn in today. <laughs> I, I followed up, man. Yeah. Now, is that... It was an odd time to bring it into the pod for the first time, <laughs> <laughs> right in the middle of the, <laughs> of the bobcat story, but... Gonna, you know. It's not a bobcat. Do you have a theme for... <laughs> There's a squirrel in my attic, play some horn. <laughs> There you go. It sounds like a squirrel. Act. There's no way it's anything you think it is. And then it, it turned out to be a red squirrel. Um, Tony from Gates Wildlife uh, came over and, uh, and oh. fixed everything. Put up a little a little cage. If they put up a little not a cage, they put up a screen with a one way door. So if he's in there, he can get out, but then he can't get back in. Yeah. What if he forgets something? Well, that's <laughs> tough luck on the red squirrel. So four years goes by. I only know four years ago because Nick from Gates Wildlife, a uh, free plug, by the way, they did not give me a discount. Um, uh, Nick came by and, and told me it was 2017 that uh, Tony had been by. So Nick comes oh. by yesterday because as I had told you guys in an early episode, uh, the animals had returned to the loft <laughs> where Jared had been living. And once again, extremely loud. Once again, even though I knew it was a red squirrel last time, I did think it was a bobcat or snow leopard. Um, so Nick comes over and, uh, and Nick goes, Nick goes up. I was going to, by the way, try to, to be a man. We've had a lot of conversations on the rubber boot <laughs> podcast brought to you by bedsafe.net about uh, doing things on our own, how we're not very handy men. So I was going to yeah. go up on the roof by myself to investigate, but uh, it was icy up there. So I was, oh, uh, you yeah, know, you I don't want to kill yourself. You, you can't risk the franchise. So I rather pay the, 500 bucks, no discount, uh, to Gates Wildlife for, for, their, for Nick to come over and do that. So um, Nick comes over and gets up there and says, uh, yeah, your squirrel's back. And I said, is it the same squirrel? Here's Johnny. <laughs> and he said, that's actually possible. Like four years later, like, I don't know how, how long do squirrels live? Can you Google that right now? How long do red squirrels live? So he says, it's likely the same squirrel or his offspring. So it's like red squirrel to the, the something. We need a oh, word. These we need things can live long, buddy. Yeah. Well, actually, sorry. Uh, so uh, regular squirrels, it says 12 to 18 years, but red squirrels, it says only up to seven years in the wild. Oh, okay. It's probably because well, they get evicted well, by people like you. <laughs> Is it really the wild if they're living in my loft? I mean, that's pretty comfortable. Only 25% so, of them survive to sexual maturity. That's kind of sad. Oh, Ooh, that's terrible. That's so sad. Uh, 
Well, now you're gonna make me feel worse. Kid. You're gonna make me feel worse for what's like. Yeah, you took away his little so, love shack again. Yeah. So, so did you guys get the video that I sent you just before the podcast started? I texted you a video. Yes. Oh, I didn't it's know what you. that was. Yeah. Okay, have, have a look at I it. I thought that was Lester. A, no, it was me. <laughs> what? A little, little video <laughs> with the with the pine. It looked cones. like a bunch of pine cones or something. It yeah, looked like it poop. It looked like poop. So that's what that is, Nick throwing the pine cones down from inside the loft. So, Seriously? Oh, <laughs> really? My red squirrel had, there is 200 pine cones, giant ass pine cones. Yeah. We have like big 90 foot high pines on my street here. Uh, like pine cones this big for the people watching on, on YouTube. Pine cones the size of, you know, wow. footballs. And wow. uh, so that's how many pine cones uh, came out of uh, the loft where the squirrel had You've gotten under the, what do you call that stuff? Fascia. Uh, soft. No, it's not fascia. Or soffit. It's soffit or fascia. Soffit. I don't know which one. Soffit. It's one soffit. or the other. Yeah. So he pried open the soffit and he'd stored all the cones in there. Smart. So Smart. now we what got do, the. Uh, I've got a question though. What do squirrels yeah. do with the cones? Like, do they, they eat, eat them? them. Eat That's them. Eat them. Well, they store That's them for winter. Out. They forget what it, where they store a majority of them though. They forget. Yeah, they'll I don't bury think that's them. possible because they're all in my, in my life. They stored acorns. No, no, they though. store them they, in different spots, though. Yeah. Do you, can you eat pine cones? Apparently, you can. You red squirrels squirrels can. They have like little, uh, I think, nuts yeah. inside. Oh, they Nick do? tells me that. Uh, Nick tells me that. Yes, the pine cones are very. It's easy, crazy to see edible. them collect pine cones because they usually do it from on top of the tree, so they'll actually stand there, shake a branch, a bunch will fall down, and they go and collect. I just don't know how they. A little squirrel can carry those. Those are big pine oh, cones. Just one at a time in their mouth. That's all. That's no, what we get one to show so you know the, oh, I know how the size it, of the yeah. pine cone we're looking at. It's sure. in their mouth. Prop? They just you want a prop? It's pretty. So, so, oh, well, guess we're getting one. Oh, there you go. <laughs> so, anyway, Nick has to uh, redo the soffit. Yep. And, uh, and get rid of uh, all the pine cones and put another brand new. Uh, one way, one way door on. Yeah, for the return for the return squirrel. And outside now, and uh, <laughs> you really? Or the, uh, uh -oh. your, your, your Wi-Fi is going. You, you went too far from the Wi-Fi. He's in the forest. Oh my god! There, there you go. Look at these. these, look at these wow, those are huge. Yeah. Those See are that huge. guy with the mask. You scare me like that, buddy. Hold on. I swear the dogs, dogs go poop. On your wow. I came up with a, I came up with a new uh, a new uh, theory this year that I'd like to throw out to our audience. I uh, you know I've never enjoyed uh -oh. Ooh, never enjoyed uh, when yeah. uh, you have to pick up all the poop. Yeah, it's like 400, oh, yeah. 400 poos. Especially when, when you had yeah, yeah when you have three dogs. Well, two oh, dogs wow. now, but three dogs. Oh, that's huge. Um, well, it's not that big. It's a big pine cone. <laughs> That's pretty good. That's huge, man. In my measure, this Are is we like calling 10, that huge. This, this is about ten inches, isn't it? <laughs> <laughs> the Brooksy said to me, "How big is that pine cone?" This is like ten inches, Brooksy. <laughs> they, they, they can't fit that in their mouth. I knew they fit the acorn. They? No, they mouth. carry it sideways. They, they, they carry really? like a, like the like a football, no, like a Heisman yeah. Trophy pose. <laughs> I pick up the poos be. as they poo now. So the dog goes out for a poop. I watch him. I go out, pick it up. Oh, that's smart. Well, that's that's what yeah, everybody does. And then no. I put it flush no. it. And I flush well, no, it down no. If, it, if it's in your backyard, you yeah. a lot of times you'll let them go and you clean it up once a week or whatever. So I have two thoughts in my head here that I'm concerned about. I've I've come to form a bond with the red squirrel because he lives in my house. Yes, and yeah, I keep that. thinking of what is. I look at all those pine cones. That's essentially. I'm thinking like he starts this in October. That's basically six months of work mm. that he's put on to put these pine cones here. So I can't, can't help but thinking about when he comes back home, because usually they're out during the day when Nick's doing his thing. That's yeah. why he puts the one-way door on. And he comes not to find himself only locked out of his house, mm -hmm. but all his, his <laughs> like, his hundred pine cones are like on the ground down with the dog poop. And the anger that he must feel towards me, you know, well, hurts me. Or Nick. Hopefully for you, his girlfriend or significant other is in the house still and just thinks that uh, he got caught doing some bad squirrel stuff and she kicked him out. Well, here's the postscript. The postscript is, uh, so Nick's got to come back in two or three days. 
And he says, he, <laughs> he says, he says, he's going to bring, bring the vet. He's going to no extra charge. Gonna bring no the, extra charge. The screen no cleaner charge. with him. It's all part of the four hundred eighty-five dollars. <laughs> the one of like the door cleaner. <laughs> so <laughs> now, now, Jimmy, this is going to be very expensive. You, hey, <laughs> Jimmy, well, you want just to make sure you know because the, the, it is visible for curb appeal. You better shine up that the one-way door I have. So I have this special squirrel <laughs> squirrel door cleaner that I can sell to you right now. Oh for my god! A limited time offer of twenty-nine ninety-five. <laughs> Okay, so um, Nick says to me, I'm like, so what's this, what, what's our situation now? He goes, well, hopefully, you know, he'll come back and he'll, it'll find it's, uh, he's gone and he'll go find, he'll go make another home if he can't get in. He said, but if like you see him or, you know, he's scratching violently at the door, that means babies. there's babies. Yeah. Mm. And I'm like, babies? I can't raise a family of squirrels by myself, Nick. I You're not raising I just, them, James. I just got an empty nester. I can't raise these squirrels because if their dad's locked out, then it's only left me to raise them. Mm-hmm. I can't do that. I mean, it would be a good Disney movie, though. It would it? Be. Like, that would be... Maybe you train them to be, <laughs> become little ping pong players. So, but, so I said, what do we do in this circumstance? And I can't let the babies die in my attic. I'm not a killer, Nick. Smell. That'd be smell. smell. Yeah. yeah. So Nick said, uh, no, we have to then let him back in and raise the children in your lot. <laughs> a little key. I'm like, what? <laughs> no, we're gonna have to make the one-way door. We'll have to turn it into a two-way door. That's another hundred and eighty. Guys, stop. <laughs> no, be, no, be, he has a house. Just be, be realistic. You, get, you should have a little paw, paw, paw print that you just put in there. That's how he gets in. Nick Come tried on. to sell me that's the, the upgrade, that's the upgraded system for the squirrels to access. <laughs> that's that's eight ninety nine. So you only get the one squirrel <laughs> family in there. So, so I'm like Nick. Okay, so I, I I either have to raise the baby squirrels myself, or if I had let this angry father who I stole all his food back in to raise the squirrels on his own, and I'm like, well, how long how long is that going to be? And Nick said, well, it'll be three, three to four months before he probably lets them go outside and, and venture out on their own themselves. Three to four months? You can't raise a family in here for the spring. Jared's <laughs> going to be back living in the loft. You, yeah, can't you, know, have, you know how Jared you know. feels about animals. <laughs> <laughs> He'll be like, <laughs> Jared did not kill the bunny. I want you to leave that there. He's a very heart, you know, heart. He's a big-hearted son. Oh, yeah. If you ask anyone in the neighborhood, they'll be surprised by that behavior as well. <laughs> <laughs> they didn't see it coming. So, so my options now, if there are babies, and we'll find out sometime in the next 48 hours, my options are... I'm sorry, are you doing uh, an ultrasound? 48 hours? <laughs> I'll hear the little scotches probably. Oh. Or if the, if, if the squirrel come, if the dad squirrel or mom squirrel, I don't even know what it is, comes back and attacks... Seems to only be a one parent family here too, which is sad. And it attacks the yeah. door. They're not up against that, enough. Uh, yeah, exactly. That 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 means there's babies if he's making a fuss outside. And if he doesn't come back, that probably means there's no babies. But if there are babies, then I my choice is to like leave the parents outside and kill the babies, or raise mm. them myself. Option two, or mm. let him back in to raise his family. And you know, once he raises his family, I don't know how many how many. What do you what do you call a, a bunch of baby squirrels? Like a pod, uh, a, pos- a pod, a litter, a flock. I would a flock, say a, a litter, litter, probably. Litter, I would say litter, probably. What is well, it? What do we know? What, the what's the penguin one? A colony, colony, colony of squirrels. I'll have the answer in one second. A scurry, a scurry of squirrels. No, they're called kittens. Or a dray, or a dray. It says here, a scurry or a dray. Kittens? Yeah. No man. Yeah, no. <laughs> yeah kits or kittens. <laughs> All right. I'm gonna say no. So I got a bunch of squirrel. I got a scurry of kittens up in my loft that I gotta raise. Cut a hole in the roof and put like a little slide coming down, and then they can just come down, and then they can run around your house and chase the dogs and stuff. Right. How do we know that this guy's the, this one squirrel's the father? Doesn't he have to go on Mori Povich now? And go <laughs> squirrel. You are the father. <laughs> Jimmy will be. Are they telling me that he starts dancing? You don't know me. You don't know me. (laughs) (laughs) Yeah. Uh, Anyway, that's the dilemma I'm facing right now. And who knows? Now, 
let's say there's let's say there's three little baby kittens in the yeah. squirrel scurry. In the scurry of squirrels, yes. Scurry of squirrels. So obviously they're coming back. Mm. Like this is now. This well, no, now, Jimmy, because only one of move, them will Jimmy. make it to sexual maturity, as we unfortunately already know. <laughs> <So were. thank, laughs> thankfully, Nature the others will die for yeah. <laughs> natural <laughs> causes. Drag. You should move. Hey, actually, I wonder if this goes back. I found a, a baby squirrel uh, outside my house. I don't know if I talked about this on the pod many years ago, and it was like the it was a tiny little squirrel. I guess had been abandoned, and it kept coming to me. And I, now I didn't know what to do. So I brought him inside and we tried to feed him and keep him warm. And then I'm like, I can't raise a squirrel inside my house. This is a true story. And, and so I'm like, I don't know what to do. So I try to, I try to put it back and it came from the neighbor's yard. I put it in back in the tree, try to give it a, like a little nest and put it in the tree that night. And I thought I'd done a good thing. And then like a couple of days later, I saw my neighbor. I'm like, what happened to that squirrel? Cause they were out at the same time. She says, yeah, it died. <laughs> that wasn't good. <laughs> So maybe that was the brother of the squirrel that came to live in my house to swore vengeance. You know how it's always the brother that yeah. comes back yeah. and like yeah. die hard two or whatever, Dude, right? I'd sleep with one mm-hmm. eye open, Jimmy. Yeah. yeah. He's coming yeah. To you. Anyway, yeah. I'll let I'll update you guys next week on the Rubber Boots podcast, but let's just hope there's no babies, right? Let's yeah. just hope there's no babies. Um please do. <laughs> Pray for James. Put that in the lineup for next week. Squirrel updates. <laughs> Squirrel updates. Already penciled in. <laughs> for wow. friends, uh, fans of the uh, Gold Bar League, it's commenced last week. Uh, we're going to talk about it at the end of the podcast. Uh, okay. Every every week at the very end of the podcast, we'll go over the, the Gold Bar League so that the people who are aren't Shocking in the Gold developments. Bar League don't Shocking have developments to this week. Is yeah, it going to be kind of like a happens. Marvel movie where like the credits will roll and then we'll show a bonus? Yeah, at the end, at yeah, the yeah. end of the credits, at the end of the credits, I think. And this this week was just a warm up week. The results didn't count, so the real results will start mm-hmm. next week. On, on whoa, 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 whoa! That <laughs> is not true at all. <laughs> no, 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 sorry. There's no. Some of us were ready involved. to start. Uh, let's get to uh, things I saw on Twitter. Freaky pigs, strange chicks, world affairs, polar bears, fake news, nice shoes, big boobs, jack dudes, all of these things and more as I sat on the shitter. Things that I saw on Twitter. Now, this is one thing I saw on Twitter. It was, I believe, originally a TikTok video, but someone tweeted it out, so it still counts. Uh, did you guys mm, watch mm, this video mm. of the... Mm-hmm. Water? We, should we just change? Can we get Lester to change the theme to things that I saw on TikTok now that you know Puffy and I are entrenched in the TikTok world? Or TikTok and that mo- mo- much of the stuff we see on Twitter is on on the TikTok mm. things that well, I cons- saw on TikTok. Considering that Lester has to leave for a show in a couple of minutes, I'm sure that's very doable for this week's <laughs> episode. <laughs> yeah, you can get it done, get it done by the next in the next four minutes. Professionally. I will, recorded. Uh, uh, what I, what I I think what I will do is I'll revisit that whole thing and just maybe make something that says social media instead. Is that okay? Be careful because it is a classic. A lot of it's people a classic I know, song. A lot of yeah. people say that okay. that's their favorite theme. So yes. okay, we got to be, we gotta okay, be careful okay. how we massage this. Well, just, just I mean, you could do the whole classic. song. You could do the whole song. You know, freaky bit, I can't remember any of them. And then after Twitter, just say and the other socials. No, you have to think. You have to think. She had to think as I sat on the shitter. So what rhymes with TikTok? What I saw on TikTok. TikTok. But as I played with my. Uh, <laughs> what I played with my as I played with my. Watching things that I saw TikTok. on TikTok. <laughs> All of these things I saw when I played with my. Things that I saw on TikTok. <laughs> yeah. Pet Rock. Uh, of course, I meant Pet Rock. Why don't you leave that to me, uh, gentlemen? And yeah, I'll, maybe. That's well, maybe, maybe that's leave a it to the call. expert. Lester, uh, Lester has to leave today because Elton Ron is back, baby. And we are going to go to an Elton Ron show. As we got can't one wait. We can all make. And now that the COVID world is starting to dissipate somewhat, yep. we are definitely going to, uh, to Elton Ron. We're going to, before this season is over, yep. we will we have played play golf together. Yes. <laughs> gone to Family an Shelby. Elton Ron show. Yes, and uh, and had uh, Eric Stone Street on the box. All three things should for him. Wow, because he's he's hosting some lame new game show that maybe we can get him for. Yeah, I saw that. That's what the little week. Yeah, he's gonna need the yep. club. All right, go ahead. Stop. Uh, start the segment now. 
<laughs> All righty. Uh, we, I sent you guys a video of this gentleman who goes into a CVS pharmacy and uh, goes through the water aisle. And I found this pretty impressive. Uh, the guy's water knowledge, and uh, we'll play that bit here. Ice Kentian Natural Spring Water. Good water. Aquafina uh, from Pepsi. Ah, processed tap. Dazani, the same from Coca Cola. Processed tap. Don't buy that. Ice Kentian again, what I consider a good water. Evian, great water. Pure water. Already the name says it, pure. Huh? So it's highly processed tap water. Don't buy that. Just water is a great water, great packaging, sustainable sourced water. I like that water. Essentia. I talk so many times about Essentia. It's highly processed tap water. Don't buy that. Fiji. Great water from the Fiji Islands. That's a very good water. Voss. Please be careful with Voss. They have the regular water. That's an artesian water from Norway. Versus their flavored water. This is purified water, guys. This has nothing to do with the Voss water from Norway. It's the same label. It's the same company. But it's a totally different source. That's tap. That is real. Don't buy the processed stuff. But Poland Springs, real water. All right, so are you guys as surprised as I am as to how many of these bottled water sources just come from a filtered tap, basically? No. I'm more surprised that, like, Evian and Fiji, which he praised, among mm -hmm. the few that he praised, were actually legitimate, because I often thought they were a scam, because you guys remember uh, the water that I order, which is a fantastic water, and I, I, I won't show the brand again because I don't want to get sued, uh, mm. that says it comes uh, uh, bottled in the uh, Wachita Mountains in the USA when then the guy who delivered it told me that it comes from Barry. Uh, but this oh. is a fantastic water. But I sometimes wonder, does water just taste better in glass than it does in plastic? I think so. Because, yeah, and so that's part of it. So <laughs> is this really great water or is it the fact that it comes in a nice glass bouteille? Well, it's a glass. It's just going to be cool. I, don't know. I, I will say this, though. Uh, there's two that he mentioned that I don't like. Um, uh, I, I think the first one was Aquafina, and oh, the yeah. second one was the Sani, yeah. I believe. And I can't stand both Gross. of those. I think both of those taste terrible. They're processed and filtered. It's just like, why does it taste so bad? <laughs> yeah, you would think it would like taste it, better. It, it, it was an odd one because that one almost felt like it would have had some more, maybe it tastes that way because that's some sort of natural or whatnot, but complete opposite. The one I found really interesting was there was one company, I think it was a Norwegian one where theirs was completely like legit from the mountains, but then they had their own uh, flavored version of water, which was just tap water, but it was, was the same Foco, company. So you would assume it was from the same place. Yes. That yeah. was, um, that's my wife's favorite. Cause it comes in the, like the cylindrical bottle mm -hmm. it's called again. Anyway, it was, it was mentioned in the thing. Um, I like like Evian, I think tastes really good, but I would like, we should do when we get back in studio, do a taste you can write, mark this down. Do an actual water taste test to see if we can tell the difference. Because I'm not, I truly believe it could just be the fact that you think you're drinking, you know, Evian water. And if you put Evian next to Aquafina, I think I'd be able to tell apart. I really think mm -hmm. I do, but I'm not sure. Yeah. Not no. sure. You should do a water draft. I've always been Ooh, in the that'd, that'd be good. That'd be good. That'll, that'll get the ratings up. Mm, a water yeah. draft. <laughs> That fee, I was, I was kind of relieved to know that that Fiji one, which is pretty expensive, is legit as yeah. well. You know, so I'm Fiji, right? Fiji it's water like, feels thicker to me. Like it feels like a thicker. The Fiji feels thick. down there. Yeah, with some thick in, in people Fiji. down from Fiji. You know, mm. but it really super fly snooker. <laughs> super fly snooker. Evi in France, some little town in France. So they really have that much water that they can supply all this bottle of water to the world. Like that's it I've always felt like it keeps stuff. raining there. That's why it's a lot of rain. Not right. the acid like in the plains either. in Spain. All right, what else you got? Right. Uh, oh yes, the uh, rubber boots. Boots. Rubber boots. Yes. 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 Yeah, we did it, boys. Yeah. We did it. And this one was sent in to us by both David Carson and Chris McLeod, which meaning we have to react, and it's quite amazing what these people want us to react to. The headline simply says, Pearlfish seek shelter, often up a sea cucumber's anus. And then we have a video of said pearlfish going into said anus. Um, react. Well, as I told you last week, I only go backyard on my third date. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> um, 
that was a reference to a, a dog date. If anybody missed last week's episode, I'm not being dirty. Um, I think that, yeah, I mean, let's face it in the uh, aquatic world, uh, you do anything you can to survive. And, uh, also an anus in the mouth. aquatic world is as clean as a mouth, right? Yeah. The water's it's, it's flowing water through the there, right? Yeah. Yeah. It's salt water too. So. Uh, really it's clean. no different than like the, you ever go down the water slides in those wet and wild places the ones with the, like the dark tube in the middle i don't think that's any different than a, a cucumber sea cucumber's anus i'm just wondering how the oh. sea cucumber feels yeah I mean, we all understand why the salt? fish is doing it but i look at i i don't think you don't see him complaining right in the video he seems to be quite content with the entire situation hmm. it's, no. do you think he like tells the other fish there's nothing to see here <laughs> <laughs> You know, but this is there's a, there's here's the thing that's interesting is you you see the fish go in forwards, but then at some point you see he the, the face around. of the of the eel, right? Mm-hmm. Right. So so there's room. Does in he there. turn around in the yeah, there's room in there? Door. There's a lot of room in there. Hmm. You know? A lot of room. Yeah, you'd be surprised wow. what you find in a sea cucumber's anus. A sea cucumber in the sea cucumber itself. Yeah, looks it's like crazy. Uh... That's a look. That's a, that's a, I would not want to discover that. It looks like it's got a bunch of looks like a bunch of pimples about to pop. It's all covered with blackheads. Mm. That's a disgusting guys, animal, really. Do you guys remember yeah. Zaya, uh, who used to be uh, a host yep. Discovery yep. at uh, TSN? And uh, yes, I'm I do. We not be able to spell her last name right now. Uh, anyway, she has a unbelievable Twitter feed. The pictures that she tweets, like there is just some crazy ass creatures on her planet. Like just Ooh, every day, she blows me away by something I've never seen before, and I'm like, "Wow, that exists on oh, our see. earth." Oh. Zaya Tong, Z I Y A T O N G, Zaya Tong, yeah. um, a worthwhile follow only for well, for numerous things. She wrote a fantastic book too, but uh, Zaya uh, tweets unbelievable creatures make you, uh, un- un- you make you. What's the word I'm looking for? They'll make your mouth drop open. It. Uh, how incredible this planet is. Uh, yes. Why don't we get to uh, the mailbag? I know Lester's got to go shortly here. Yes. Mm-hmm. This is I talk. Her thing is Earthling, by the way. Earthling is her... Uh, Earthling is her word. handle. At Earthling. Handle, yes. On Twitter, give yes. it a follow. Now at Earthling? Yes. At Earthling. Uh, at Earthling. Uh, yeah. yeah. At, Z- right. actually, at Zyaton. At Zyaton. At Earthling is her handle. Why are you, why are you giving bad we, information? We, it's not we, at Earthling. At Zayatong. It literally sounds like you've never used the internet before. Now, what do you put after the uh, A symbol? uh, Where's the at (laughs) symbol? On to the mailbag. Do we let Lester go now just so he doesn't have to leave in like mid segment? Got to go to the. I should should probably take him off, guys. Uh, Cut him off. I'm sorry that I have to leave. Uh, To the Rubber Boots audience, I will not be on next week, unfortunately. I'm away. But I believe we have a special guest coming in, if that's correct. Have we confirmed that guest? Yes. Zaya, can I, yeah, Zaya Tong. Zaya Tong. <laughs> <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, Earthling. I'm pleased to announce that in my absence, you will get 100% of Bump Mount Frump. You got it, baby. Bump is coming back Zaya. next week. I'm excited. I'm going to be listening. Is that, is that official? Enjoy it. Does Bump know this, or is he finding out right now? He might be finding out right now. <laughs> it's gonna be worse now when we don't see you next week, Bump. <laughs> maybe. <laughs> maybe, maybe I haven't. All right, I, guys, so I gotta proved, go. Proved it yet? All right, Lester, see you. So let's get to all the the Lester hate mail now. Yeah, Lester. Yeah. So here's a one note. From, oh, sorry, sure it's extensive. <laughs> it's yeah, extensive. Okay, bye, guys. That's uh, that's our friend yeah. Lester McLean. He's a he's a musical genius and a good friend of all of us here on the Rubber Boots Podcast. Uh, the mailbag. Go ahead. Uh, go ahead, stop. Listen to the mail. Listen to the mail. Thank you for listening. Yes, we throw into this theme several times. Uh, let us now get to it. <laughs> Prophylactic Nation reacting, doing their own rubber boots reacts to our bid on the greatest soundbite. Uh, we throw out a couple. We ask people for theirs. Uh, so here come the suggestions. Andrew Arsenal in the mailbag. I find that funnier than you guys, especially if you put in the entire theme every time. That would really be annoying to the listeners, but it would be a funny gag. But if they want to hear their mail, (laughs) (laughs) 
Andrew Arsenal says, how can the oh, hold greatest... On. Hold on, hold on. <laughs> if you throw the man back call. one more time, I'm shutting this out. <laughs> James receives a phone call. Hold on, speaker. Mr. or Mrs. Do. I like how you spell that. Do the... Do the... Do you? Yeah, that's the first two letters. If you guess the next one, I'll keep talking to you. Click <laughs> It's time for the mailbag. Thank you for listening. It was the squirrel's legal representative Mr. calling. Is Mr. And Mrs. Do there, please? Like, do you even have in your little stupid computer that generates these phone calls? Do you have, can you not have the full spelling of the name if you're going to cold call someone? Do. Mrs. Do. Now, maybe, maybe that should have been my name, Jake Do. <laughs> D-E. Better than Jake Don't. Uh, okay, let's get to the mailbag. Thank you for listening. Perfect. I'm hesitant to start at this point. <laughs> I'm afraid we'll ask the one we'll throw to it again. All right. Perhaps we can listen to what Andrew Arsenal wrote. And he yes. wrote, it's time for Mailbag. Mailbag. All right. Andrew Arsenal says, how can the greatest soundbite of all time not be O-Dog? Is there ketchup on that? Ketchup on Good point. Obviously a great. We also, uh, PSN Good ran point. a documentary special on it once. Must yeah. see. It's Good point. Uh, David Carson says, my best soundbite is at the 30 second mark of this video. And it's a video of a woman who pointed, painted her house in the colors of the Edmonton Eskimos. This was the origin of the phrase, why not a, which was obviously extremely popular on Jay and Dan. Well, number one, the house needed a paint job. It's like a hundred and something years old. We had a chance to pick up this green and gold paint. Uh, pretty reasonable. So we said, why not eh, for the Eskimos? So why not a? Yeah. Like, okay. So I never knew. I never knew where that came from. Hmm, yeah. So, so that, uh, that's where it came, a lady came from basically that video? Uh, she had to paint her house. They were offering a discount on the Eskimos colors, and so she said, "Why not a?" <laughs> that's where that drop came from. A All right. Lady okay. out in Edmonton. Uh, Rockin Reed says, "To that's my quarterback." Also yeah, a that's classic. A good one. Rock and Reed, good buddy of mine. I used to appear on his uh, his radio station for several nice. years in Kingston. Mm-hmm. And then, uh, then he changed to a different format and he just cut my ass. So thanks for still listening, buddy. I love you. So, sounds like it went left at some point. Snack bites, <laughs> Pete. I've always liked Denny Greens. They are who they thought they were, and we let them off the hook. I missed that man. Yeah, talking about here. that. Yeah. Mister Loon writes in. We talking about practice. Yep. Not a game. Not a practice. game. Practice. Has Mr. Loon written in before? There's a lot of familiar names, Damn it. but I never Mr. heard of Mr. Mr. Loon. Loon's a new one. So mm, love it. We like that. We like Mr. Loon. Roger K. Marshall. I couldn't hear what Jeremy was saying. I had my two I Stanley Cup two rings. Two Stanley Cup rings blocking my, my ears. ears. In my ears. In my ears. Uh, that's ears. A, that is a great one. Uh, keep them coming. And I'm thinking, what Should we, we do, do a soundbite sound? madness bracket? No. And another another good one from Patty Wa is I'm going to Disney's land <laughs> after, he won, after he won the cup. <laughs> Disney's land. <laughs> it does belong to Mr. Disney. So uh, no soundbite madness bracket. That's unfortunate. Uh, well, you can do it if you want. Be crushed. Yeah. No, we'll go. We'll go. Well, for it. Keep I them mean... coming. If we get enough, we'll do a yeah. full sure. showdown to sure. crown the champion. Uh, we got some feedback re- regarding your rebrand, Jimmy. Uh, Jake Bowen wrote, "This hurts as a Jake." So oh. uh, <laughs> I was just disappointed in uh, your Jake Brooks. Uh, Mark Peters writes in, "Jake Brooks is 100% Jimmy's porn star name." So I like it. Yeah, I think. Pizza delivery boy, Jake, Jake Brooks. Brooks. Yes, I'm gonna go with uh, Jimmy Pearlfish. <laughs> That's your, just that's my porn name. Yeah, watch out, <laughs> cucumber. <laughs> AJ yep. Chahil writes in Frasier, one of the best spinoff shows ever. Correct. Uh, as you know, me and Lester were showing a lot of love to yeah, Frasier last week. Big love. So that's for probably, I kind of forgot. Frasier was a, he was on Cheers, Cheers right? Yeah. 
Yeah. Is is there another spinoff that even worked remotely that you guys can think of? Yes, there definitely is, but I'm trying to remember. <laughs> yeah, we're not going to be able to do it in this moment right here. Facts of Life? A, what was, was that a spinoff, spin-off of what? Like? Different Strokes. Oh. Miss Garrett? All right. Uh, Joey. It was Joey where they tried that a Joey spinoff of well. Fred. No, did Joey did well. not go well. Um... Well, I mean, other do you count the law and orders the and stuff like that? Because there's, uh, uh, there's the I don't think you can't, like, really... you can't call you can't do like Chicago Fire, Chicago no. PD, Chicago. Yeah, Grey's Anatomy what? had private practice that uh, Tanya loved. Was what are we just concentrating on sitcoms? Uh, Mork and Mindy spun off a of Happy Days. Yeah, it did. Yeah, and that was very popular. Laverne and Shirley did, were they a spinoff? Also a spinoff of Happy Days. Were they? Yeah, yeah. Uh, Jimmy, your your uh, namesake was a spinoff. Melrose Place. Jake? Apparently, a oh yeah, it was uh, no. of nine hundred two one zero. Yeah, yeah. Nine, nine, nine. I thought it was, it was just similar there. to nine hundred two one zero. Was a spinoff of nine hundred two one zero. Jake Jake was on uh, the nine hundred two one zero. I think him and Kelly had a little 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 relationship, and then he went off That's to right. Melrose Place. That's right. Boston, uh, go. W- you know, to tie in, uh, I think that Jenny Garth had an affair with Kevin Costner at some point in time, too. Really? I don't know if that's well out there in Hollywood, but I think it was a... Well, it is out there now. Break, yeah. This yeah. is Bet Safe Breaking News. Breaking News. Breaking News. Maybe I should have my own site, like, uh, one of those sites, you know, like the TMZ and... What's that guy's name? What's the one guy who has Perez the Hilton? Yeah, him. Perez Hilton. Yeah. Maybe I should Jake have my own. Brooks. Well, Jake, Jake Brooks. JakeBrooks.com. I might have heard. JakeBrooks.com has a chat, I think. I think that's a Jimmy, Jimmy Pearlfish.org. <laughs> Ooh, guys, I found a good one. I actually found okay. a legit good spinoff. Better Call Saul. Uh, was that, that good? Is, I don't know. I, I haven't watched it. Uh, you got to get into Better Call Saul. You have to. Better Call Saul is an interesting show because there are a few episodes you got to tolerate. Uh, but the payoff in Better Call Saul as the seasons go along is spectacular. And so, uh, yeah, Better Call Saul is Well, what about, um, awesome. uh, what's it called? Uh, the Costner uh, Cowboy Show. I'm drawing a blank right now. I love it. Yellowstone? Uh, Yellowstone. There's Yellowstone 18... 1883. That yeah, well, Brooksy and, I, Brooksy and I are just starting that. They're just starting that. That's probably too soon to tell of that one. Yeah, it's yeah. probably true. And it's not really a spinoff. It's a prequel more, right? Prequel. Yeah, I guess that's true. Okay, keep going. All righty. Uh, thanks for writing in, AJ. Um, we have Dave Gosa sending this in. Quite interesting tweeting. Uh, barnacle penises are eight times the size of their bodies. Dave Goss responding back at them. I already knew this. Correct. Yeah. Obviously. You listen to this podcast, you might learn a thing from time to time. Like Brian Hayden, who learned to probably not repeat things that are said on this podcast, as he writes in, this was the gentleman who. Uh, 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 met his wife at uh, the uh, Greystones. Greystones, Greystone. yes. Uh, so he wrote, yeah, so I asked my wife if she was 106 years old. <laughs> Needless to say, that Awkward. 25th anniversary celebration happening is a little dicey. Yep. Yes, Greystones, big night used to be Friday nights. 19, uh, 19 years plus, anyone who was anybody in the Aurora and surrounding Metropolis were there. So, so Jimmy, you ever well, make it? I've never been player. to Ah shucks, which is the other uh, one in Aurora. Ah shucks. Although I went to a pub, met a couple of buddies the other day. I don't get out much in my own town. And I, I, I was in this pub in Aurora, and I can't even remember the name of it. And like about eight different people I knew came into the pub, and they all sort of told me that this was the happening place in Aurora. So maybe I'm going to start. Uh, nice, Jimmy. Start every fr- every Thursday, there. Friday, Saturday night, I'll be, be there. Like, be like Dregs. Dregs gets out every week. I, did I mention that every one of the people that came into that pub was divorced? So oh. it might not be the greatest of ideas. Yeah. That's bad. I um, should break up that family of squirrels and all this. Uh, we got people who are commenting still about our best episode. Oh. Uh, mm. Now, although I will say for the most part, we should be just looking for our second most favorite episode because there seems to be a pretty clear line on the favorite. As uh, Brad Mahar writes in the Masters episode where Puffy had to apologize to the Queen. Uh, We had tons, tons of requests for uh, the Masters episode. So 
I guess that would be a clear winner. Although some other suggestions from people, EJ writes in Daddy Bath or any of the Masters pods. Uh, Chewy Louie, my favorite will always be Champagne Podcast. Again, Masters. That's also Masters, yes. Yeah. Snack Bites Pete, not the one where Jimmy says, I would <laughs> sacrifice Snack Bites Pete. Probably the worst <laughs> episode. I don't know. I kind of like that one. But I would sacrifice that. I, I understand why. That was the one where I believe Puppy asked us to sacrifice a member of the Platinum League. That's right. <laughs> For her own benefit. Um, Roger K. Marshall. Exactly. Yep. Masters. Puffy and the fact that he needed to apologize to the Queen. Ricky mm-hmm. Schmidt. Murder Island was pretty classics. Rodents in the Attic, which is, uh, I'm oh. guessing Ricky will love this week's episode because love it. Yeah. that was part one there of you this. Go. This might be the best episode we've ever done right now. It might be. Particularly like the last 10 minutes with the three of us. Poor Lester. (laughs) Uh, She also mentions anything with Emilio. People missing Emilio. We all do. Poor little guy. I'm sure he'll be back one day. Maybe season 11. Jake Bowen writes in, my favorite episode is the one where they dubbed in James Dutty, which was a fun one as well. That was good. Jimmy was away in. What did you actually like, do? Did public you, or something? You, you, oh yeah, you took you edited my voice from other clips. Yeah, so oh, I just I pulled. Take it off. I pulled clips <laughs> from uh, other episodes and basically <laughs> talked around made them. No, no sense, and there were people that actually thought it was a real episode. <laughs> people just thought you were like really tired or something. <laughs> <laughs> Jimmy's making not making any sense this week. Funny. That's funny. I guess it kind of tells you what they expect from our podcast. <laughs> yeah, that's their favorite. <laughs> like, ah, this doesn't really make sense, but okay. Uh, All righty. Now, speaking of favorite episodes, uh, there is one gentleman who's gone above and beyond so far, as I keep getting updates that our YouTube uh, on season one, our episodes are being commented on. And so he's basically, his name is Sean Morrison. And he's going episode by episode and uh, leaving us little reviews. So I'm assuming he's just trying to find his favorite. So episode one. Unbelievable. Right? That's yeah, awesome. Ep- episode we one. We should hire notes. him. Yeah, we should. <laughs> I mean, now we're, now we're looking to replace Lester. We need an archivist. <laughs> an archivist. So he can we, we can say, like, live during the pod, I'll say, hey, Sean, could you get that clip in season four, episode three, when I was talking about the... The barnacle penis or whatever, and boom, you'll have it just like that. And I'll be like, why so formal, James? Why so formal? (laughs) Uh, Uh, Anyway, episode one. When Puffy lands you as a father-in-law, does he get to have daddy baths? I I would like to know the answer to that question. I think we're all terrified to find out. Uh, Episode three, Bob's the man. I miss Bob. That was the episode where we have Bob Bob McKenzie on. Yeah. Episode four, he uh, says he would feel. He wonders how Jay Baruchel would feel about Shea Weber after going to the finals. So Mm -hmm. we'll have to get Jay on again to answer that. Mm -hmm. Episode five, as an Oilers fan, that 06 Cup was an easy pick. I believe we were discussing our favorite. Stand I, have no, I have no idea what he's referencing. <laughs> he, he could be rat- writing the most random. <laughs> shit. You never know. This is unbelievable. Yeah. So is he really going through? This is these yeah. are the first seven episodes of the podcast. This is, and <laughs> the and they're the they're podcast. literally coming in like once every so often. So I think he's sitting there listening wow. to these things. Yeah, episode yeah, six. Got. These rod recaps are amazing. Need to bring them back. I gotta send him some. I gotta send yeah. him some. Yeah. The 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 best is that he did not have anything good to say about episode two. <laughs> well, episode two was a bit of a clunker. Yeah. So <laughs> it is fair. The funny thing about the uh, puffy uh, masters uh, queen David Hearn episode is that you know Lester always jokes about us not getting canceled. That was the one that almost got us canceled. <laughs> Did it, did it was there actual <laughs> there was a, a conversation i had with a certain boss uh his name rhymes with uh ben folden <laughs> and and uh he said yeah i listened to that uh, masters episode of your pod and i go yeah he goes not good <laughs> <laughs> it's funny because i received that same comment um and when actually when they brought up the that episode uh and uh, puffy's uh behavior in it I said, that's our most, third most downloaded episode. And uh, that same individual yeah. just went, yeah, not good. <laughs> oh, good old Ben Folden. He doesn't know too much about what the people like. 
<laughs> right. Bobby, the Masters is it. coming. The Masters is yeah. coming. We should have we, another. Uh, are, are me and Lester going to get to go down this year? Is that where we're going to finally get to play golf together at Augusta? Yes. No, and I think we'll have to have puppy drinking again, but we just have to maybe, maybe I'll talk to Ben Folden and, and see if we can get a, you know, just a warning advisory. An advisory. <laughs> like, <laughs> what happens on this podcast does not represent the views of Bell Media. Bell Media. Jimmy, Warning. stop, Lester. <laughs> Warning, Puffy is no longer employed by TSN or Bell Media. Just put me on sabbatical uh, yeah. for a couple weeks. Exactly, exactly. Uh, anyway, Sean Morrison, thank you, buddy. Uh, keep it up, please, Love because uh, we need a, we need a documentation, yes. docu- we, we, historical we, documentation. We need the, the comments. We need the thumbs up. Get out there and give us some thumbs up. Give us some follows on the socials. Right. Let's uh, let's do a quick recap of the Gold Bar League week one. Gold Bar League. Oh yes, let's do it. I love gold, and so do you. Do, 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 do. Join the Gold Bar League, and you can have some too. Do, 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 do. It's the gold, the Gold Bar League. Come on and join the gold. The uh, first well, of all, it was a tra- it was a travesty. But I, I I really like the new system where you you send a little form and you just pick out the little things. Mm-hmm. Like Much that. easier. So for someone that's else. the way it's going to work. You're not we're, so we're not betting like four bars at one game and all that. No, and so a couple like people messaged to ask game. about if we're going to wager how many bars going forward. Uh, we won't until the Platinum League. The Platinum League will okay. still run the way it did last year. So we'll have okay. some fun with that. This way we can involve a lot more people. Uh, it's just easier for everyone to fill out. There's less to keep track of. And, uh, yeah, How many were there questions? There were six games, five games? Six, six. Six games. So I got six. one out of six. You got one out of six. Uh, there were That's no perfect joke. scores. Only four huh. people got one wrong, so it went five for six. One of them sitting below me here. Yeah, right. he's sitting below five. me on my screen. He's sitting below me on my screen. See, I'm in the top right on my screen. Both of us. Yeah. Well, that's not how it's going to look to the people. So you're there, there stop. Uh, four there. people went oh, over. 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 Okay. Should yes. we name them? No, no. It wasn't Ho, right? Ho did well. Uh, Ho did okay, I believe. Um, so we had an average uh, score of 2.46 amongst everybody. Not very good. So, yeah, we all got the failing grade together. The median, again, was 2 out of 6. Not great. Right. The, uh, the game we all did collectively worse than it was the Lakers game, where the Lakers, I guess, did upset the uh, Golden State Warriors. Only 19% of people got that right, including yours truly. And the Canucks was the easiest pick, oddly enough. I got that one wrong, but uh, 50% right. bet against the Leafs and were right. I did. So uh, that was quite Wow, simple. what a traitor. I don't even like the Leafs, and you bet against them, your team. And they I could smell it. They were not. Hey, was, was Duke? I really like did before. this in a hurry. I got to admit, I filled this out in about 35 seconds. Uh, sure, Was sure. Duke favored by 11 and a half in that game that they yeah. lost by 14 or something? They, they were actually favored. So I had to kind of estimate that one because it was an L, and they ended up being favored by 12. Oh, so I, I got pretty close with that. I should have uh, picked. That was a mistake on my. I should have picked North Carolina. I mean, well, Shea's last game. Yeah, was yeah you would have figured they'd be up for it, right? Not and, they, and, they, and they beat him by double digits, uh, you know, by 20, I think, earlier in, uh, in the year. So uh, that definitely a shocking one. But, uh, yeah, some people cashed in on it amongst those people as we head to the standings for the prophylactic conference. Tied for first with five gold bars, we have Marcus. We have Jerkson. Nice. Great name, Jerkson. And Gold McDonald. Love it. Now, I love the name Gold McDonald, but we actually know who Gold McDonald is. Uh, he oh, was yeah. in the Platinum League last year. Oh, who is El Kiff now goes Oh, by. I love it. Gold El McDonald. Kiff. So it's a Le rebrand Kiff. for El Kiff. Le Kiff. Le Kiff. Right, hey, Le re- Kiff. rebranding is big right now. Rebranding Le- is Le- big. Le Kiff, is, he's legitimately good at this. He's, yeah, he's, he is. Yeah, so. there's yeah, there's some guys who are showing uh, they know what they're doing here. Maybe uh, Lakiff could start giving us some tips for the real the real money wagering. <laughs> exactly, Miss, Mystic Lakiff. <laughs> Maybe Puffy can bring him on as a advisor. Yeah, of sorts. Maybe I need for him. sure. Uh, okay, now so those are the three people tied for uh, first with five gold bars. There's a 16 way tie at four gold bars. Wow. Okay. 
uh, for second or I guess fourth in this matter. Uh, so I didn't I didn't bother listing all those names because it's a lot and there's even more people tied for third and fourth. Uh, however, I did write down some noble, notable names since uh, our listeners do come up with some creative names in general. So I will list them now. Uh, we not only have Puffy, we have Puffy Otter. Nice. Okay. It's just a Puffy Otter, I guess. Uh, so I think he's referring to the fact that you look like an otter. And a lot that's of people have been saying that. That's that's a lot of people true. saying that you look that like an otter. not true. They're very otter. smart animals, the otters. Yeah. Smart like an otter. That's what smart they always do. You know what you call baby otters? What? Kittens. Oh, yeah. Puppies, otter. I thought. But okay. Uh, someone's going by Champagne Tuesday. These better not be all your uh, burner accounts, by the way. <laughs> I'm going to win this thing. Uh, there's also T Berg. Uh, nice. Someone going by Why Not A. Good. Uh, there was a Jake Brooks, which I figured out is Jimmy. Oh, okay. However, you, there is also. Is it you? It is nice, Jimmy. Jimmy. Nice. There is also a Jake Brooks Jr. I love my it. Son. My son. So we'll see who that that's is. Not, I don't know who that is. But that's is that not. Jared? That'd be awesome if it was Jared. <laughs> no, no, Jared does not listen to this podcast. He has better things to do with his life. No, but all his, his, all, all his buddies are big pro flag nation people. <laughs> that's right. For sure. Uh, there's Dr. Byrne. The Looper. The Looper. Uh, big Schlong Sean. And it's one of my that's, burner accounts. That's definitely your burner account. <laughs> As I'm sure is Thug Muffin. Uh, call me Mr. Jibs. I believe that's one of my buddies, actually. Nice. Uh, I want a fake prize is someone's name. <laughs> El Muerfo, which uh, okay. I don't know what that means. I just thought it was kind of... Cool. Looks like I get somebody with the last name Murphy, maybe. El Muerfo. <laughs> El Muerfo. Uh, vanilla Killer G. <laughs> All right. Watch out, Vanilla. Uh, Canada Dingo, who I know we've okay. had uh, previously. I think they were in last year's uh, Gold Bar League as well. <laughs> the next Duffy. one is Duffy Family Vet, <laughs> although Duffy is spelled D U F F Y. But man, would that be a rich person? So, do, do, are there still people that are faithful fans of this podcast that think yes. my name is called D U F F Y? It's awesome. That's amazing. Uh, All right. Jimmy Screen Cleaner Jimmy. is another entry. <laughs> Trojan Baz. Nice. I'm not sure what's a re- reference to, but caught my eye. Pharma Mag One. I don't get that one. Yeah. Maybe someone's just uh, entered this at a pharmacy and that's one with the first thing that popped in their head. Uh, then there's Popsicle PD. Nice. Sounds dirty. Sounds dirty. Uh, there's the real JD. Hey, back so off. It's a little aggressive. And uh, Jagger Bombs, as in Love it. Yager, Yager, mm, so Love Jagger it. Bombs. Uh, some some Love terrific it. names out there, Some people. really good names. I uh, love Jimmy's screen cleaner. <laughs> Quite good. Uh, Thug Muffin, pretty good. Jake Brooks Jr., obviously just gold. Uh, let's move on to what everyone's been waiting for, the talent conference. As you know, this year the uh, talent conference is split up into two tiers. The top tier, the Rubber Boots tier, yep. uh, where AK, uh, Aaron Kromick from First Up, leads the way with I'm four I'm told you he's not talent, even though legitimately he's, he is talent. He, is talent he hosts talent. a radio oh. show, but... I still question if you call him talent. Well, you can question it when you have as many gold bars as he does, which is four. Yeah. And we'll get to your total in a second, Jimmy. <laughs> Once we go past Lester's You already Lester's said three, I got one, you idiots. And mine, too. <laughs> so it goes AK Lester Stoff, Jimmy in fourth with one gold bar. And now we proceed to move down into the first up tier where Puffy leads the way with five. Oh. Five gold bars. Huge Carlo big. has three. And Bob Weeks rounds out D tier with one. How do you? How do the people in the first up tier advance? Is that an end of season thing with relegation? Yes, but they will have a shot. So the winner of the first up tier will have a playoff against someone in the rubber boots tier, whoever finished second for the. And if anybody missed week one, do we just let them in, but they have to start with zero, or how do we do that? So. The way we're doing it this year, the top, the total for uh, the top eight people will make it in for the whole thing, but we will have uh, an extra entry for people who win the March of, uh, sorry, the month of March and the March of April. Okay. The month so of, if you okay. can, you can, you can join right. Their now. month, there's monthly, yes, and okay. you can still okay. catch up. I mean, you know, 
Yeah, I mean, Jimmy, I don't know if anyone can make up the one head start you gave on him. Yeah, so uh, I was thinking since the uh, first up tier only has three competitors, it's kind of unfair. Maybe we can add someone else. Uh, one obvious entry for me was uh, from the Atlanta Falcons, Calvin Ridley. I love. I would love my new favorite well, player. I, I believe would become a very faithful participant in our. Yeah, yeah he's only, and, he's, and he's got a he's got a year to kind of chill out and just. He's got nothing to do. He's got nothing. Lol. To do. <laughs> that was my favorite part. They only gave me a year. Lol. <laughs> Oh, yeah, he's man. something else. Not that it takes. Um, somebody posted a video of him like running backwards on certain plays that said it was damning, and I'm like, come on, like no receivers, especially small ones, they cut back sometimes to try to find more room. There, I watched the three plays. I'm like, none of those plays where he, and most of them were in the first quarter. Like he's not throwing a game by giving up four yards on a reception and, in the. And first he bet quarter. on his team to win, and he wasn't even playing. Yeah, so it exactly. just it was just he was bored. We've all this is going to be this is going to be the thing. You're you're with legalizing everything here. You're yep. you're you're raising a gambling nation, or yep. continent, whatever you want to call it. I this is going to be the tip of the iceberg because if people get used to doing it in high school and college or whatever, mm-hmm. yeah, have to turn it off when you get to the become... to the league. We need to go over one rule uh, because one okay. person tried this. Uh, one submission per person. Okay, oh, with two submissions, you'll get zero. And the Must other rule Carlo. is there will be no submissions from Lyndon seventy seven. <laughs> that is BS. He's still facing that his three year ban. <laughs> he hold submitted on. this he, year. Hold on, he gets banned longer than Calvin Ridley. Yes, yes. <laughs> We're not the NFL here, buddy. We don't screw around. <laughs> the integrity is all that matters at the Gold Bar League. Lyndon seventy seven will be in. Cheering he cheering will you. find I'm a way che- around this I'm cheering. complex I'm cheering system. For him. I'll have a I'll have a talk with the commission. He could have been at least a little smarter and put a different username. Did he actually submit it as Linden seventy seven? Oh, he absolutely <laughs> did. <laughs> and he's been bad. You never surrounded yourself with the smartest of friends. <laughs> that includes me. Uh, thanks for listening to the Rubber Boots podcast. Uh, see you next week. Hey, how are you? I got a question that I read. Really wanna ask you Wait Don't hang up I need to know so I'm gonna try and push my love Are you wearing your rubber boots tonight? Are they purple, yellow, green or black or white? Are you wearing your rubber boots tonight? Do you like the dunk tank? Tonight? Tonight?